Hey guys, I'm Josh. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over some benchmarks of the $600 PC that I just built, mainly going over the Ryzen 5 3600 paired with the MSI GTX 1660, just base. As usual, before the video even starts, if you could please leave a like on the video. It really helps a small channel like mine grow. And if you are new here and you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. That way you're just notified whenever I make a new video. And as usual, timestamps will be linked down below as well as in the description just in case. And I'm going to link down in the description a couple more videos that I found just on YouTube for the channel Santiago Santiago, as well as I believe his name is Gentleman. Um, and they have videos of benchmarks using these exact specs, the Ryzen 5 3600, as well as the 1660, going over like 20 plus games. All it is is just benchmarks for that. So I'll link that in the description if you do want to see you know, a specific game, such as like Overwatch or Valorant or something like that, that I don't cover here today. So the very first benchmark that I ran was Cinebench R23. So I'll throw up a chart compared to the CPUs of today as well, including the new Ryzen 3rd gen. We seem to be falling right under the Intel i7 9700K as well as about 300 to 350 points behind the new Ryzen 5 5600X and about 200 to 300 points above the Ryzen 3 3100. So that puts us right in the middle of both of those kind of sweet spots. If you can find a Ryzen 3 and you're just wanting to game, you know, that'd be perfect. Actually, you save a little bit of money. So for Cinebench, my single core performance was right around 1200 and my multi-core performance score was right above 9100. So what does this mean in the real world? So in terms of gaming, of course, you don't really need a super demanding CPU whatsoever. For this content creation stuff, being able to render a 13 minute video filmed in, you know, upscaled 1440p and rendering it out at 1080p for YouTube, 13 minute clip, um, it took just about six minutes. So, you know, literally 30 seconds per each minute of filming with multiple layers and stuff like that. So in DaVinci Resolve, exporting that out saved a ton of time. So a little bit more for content creation stuff. I ran the Crystal Disk benchmark for the hard drive on this since I've never had an NVMe SSD other than, you know, on here for flash storage. But I thought I'd run it and just see what the scores we get. So for pretty much the read and write time, we're getting some pretty very decent scores at read at right around 3,500 megabytes per second as well as right at right around 2,500 megabytes per second. So if you're coming from even an SSD or a hard drive, you're definitely gonna notice a difference when you're either moving files around or trying to delete stuff. It's been super helpful for me, uh, especially when getting things set up for the first time, downloading all of these games and drivers and you know all of this stuff. Dragging and dropping from my external hard drive to there, it's been so quick. And as for another synthetic benchmark, I ran Unigen's Heaven benchmark and the score for this was 2665 with an average frame rate of 105 frames per second, which is actually really good, especially for the price range that we're kind of building in. And for the settings we used for this was just the base 1080p settings. I believe it's 1080p extreme as the preset. So in terms of score, of course, we kind of fall right in between the 1650 super slash ti range and the you know 1660 ti or 1660 super so the first game that i ran that i have is minecraft running at fast settings as well as render distance kind of set to medium overall you know minecraft can really run in anything but we are getting around you know like the three four five six seven hundred range of fps a uh, real world example of this that i would probably do is just setting the render distance up uh you know if you wanted it all the way up go ahead and do so you'd be perfectly fine with this piece next up i loaded up some shaders onto my minecraft it seemed that shaders were affecting it pretty bad actually because we were at like 99 percent gpu utilization as well as we we're you know barely getting 60 fps Keep in mind I am recording on this. So I'd recommend if you did really want shaders, just going for like a light pack. I know I've seen a couple of those and those seem to really help just, you know, GPU as well. But you know, for this, I'd recommend probably not using shaders all that much. Next up, we loaded up Warzone. I kind of just used the Nvidia GeForce Experience presets for that, kind of high on everything pretty much. 
but overall for this game we seem to be getting right around 90 to 100 fps um keep in mind i did optimize some stuff just so that you know it'll run a little bit better while recording i think a prompt popped it up while i was just loading up the game this game as you can see runs pretty much no problem at right around 90 to 100 fps i'm sure if i wasn't recording and you messed with a little bit of stuff moving some to medium and some to high you could get around 144. Um, for that actually I feel like you'd probably have to do some medium some low you can get 144 but you know running at 100 fps is really not too bad especially for kind of the price range that we're in. Uh, for the very first one that we have coming up over here is Modern Warfare running at an average FPS of 90 for Fortnite. We have an average FPS of 262. For GTA, we have an average FPS of 88. And for CSGO, we have an average FPS of around 240. And for Cyberpunk, we have an average FPS on medium settings to 56 FPS. So this is a very capable system at around $600. Sure, you may not be doing ultra and epic settings for that, maybe not even 1440p, but for 1080p gaming and maybe some 1440p titles, you should be more than fine. And again, I'm very new at this benchmarking stuff. This is my first PC, but people just wanted to see a couple benchmarks and stuff. So, you know, if there's anything that I missed or anything that I got wrong, please leave a comment down below correcting me. And again, thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you want to see any more videos about the PC or anything that I've really missed. And Hope you guys have a great one. See you guys later.